Hello, Matthew here, and we're going to look at question two, which is an algebra question worth 30 marks. So we're asked to solve the following equation, and whenever we're asked to solve an equation, what that means is to find the value of x. So at the end of the question, we should have x equal to some number, and that number will be our answer. So let's start by multiplying 2 by the bracket. So that's going to be 2 by 3x, which is 6x, and 2 by minus 5, which is minus 10. And we still have the plus 8 and the 4x minus 5, which gives us 6x minus 10 plus 8 is equal to 4x minus 5. So now what we have to do is put all the similar terms on either side. So we have the terms with an x, which will go on the left-hand side, and the terms without an x, which will go on the right-hand side. So my terms with an x are 6x and 4x, and my terms without an x are minus 10, plus 8, and minus 5. So I want all the terms with an x on the left-hand side, and all the terms without an x on the right-hand side. So I already have 6x on the left-hand side, and I'm going to move the 4x across to the left-hand side, and it was plus on the right-hand side, so moving it across to the left-hand side, it's going to go over as minus 4x, and that's going to be equal to minus 5. And then moving the minus 10 plus 8 over, I'm going to have plus 10 minus 8. As when you move a minus across the equals to sign, it goes to plus. And when you move a plus across the equals to sign, it goes to minus. The same way that multiplication goes to division when you move it across the equals to sign. And division goes to multiplication when you move it across the equals to sign as well. So that leaves me with 6x minus 4x on the left hand side. And we can actually do that sum. And 6x minus 4x is 2x. And that's going to be equal to minus 5 plus 10 minus 8. And minus 5 plus 10 minus 8 is equal to minus 3. So that gives me 2x is equal to minus 3. Now, as I said at the start, I don't want 2x equal to a number. I just want x equal to the number. So to get rid of the 2x, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And the reason I'm doing that is because 2x divided by 2 will leave me with just x. So essentially, if you're left with any number before the x there, you're just going to divide both sides by whatever number is before the x. So in my case, it was 2. And 2x divided by 2 is going to be just x. And then minus 3 divided by 2 is going to be minus 3 over 2. So as I said before, whatever number is before the x, just divide both sides by that number to get your answer, which in my case was minus 3 over 2. And that question was worth 10 marks. And now let's have a look at part B, which is worth 5 marks. So we have to use our logarithm rules in this question, and you can find those on page 21 of your formula and tables book. So here I'm going to take the top of the fraction first, so 3 to the power of 4 or to the power of 5, and let's see what that goes to using our rules on page 21 of the formula and tables book. So it's the third rule down on the left hand side of the page right here, so it's 8 to the power of p all to the power of q, and that's equal to a to the power of p multiplied by q. So let's use that rule now in or question to see what 3 to the power of 4 all to the power of 5 goes to. So that's going to be 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 5, which is equal to 3 to the power of 20. So that's going to give us 3 to the power of 20 all over 3 to the power of 6. And once again, we're going to use our formula and tables book to find out what that's equal to. And the rule we're going to use is the rule just above that one, which is a to the power of p over a to the power of q, and that's equal to a to the power of p minus q. So in our case here, a is 3, p is 20, and q is 6. So let's try that. And obviously 20 minus 6 is 14, so that's equal to 3 to the power of 14. So that's our answer in the form 3 to the power of k, where k is equal to 14. So that's our answer for part B. Now let's have a look at part C, which is worth 15 marks. So here we're asked to solve the simultaneous equations. And remember, the first thing we do when solving simultaneous equations is to get one of the variables to be eliminated. So that's either the x's or the y's. And we can do that by getting the same number before both x's and to have one of them as plus and the other as minus, or the same number before both y's and having one of them as plus and the other as minus. And we can multiply both lines by a number, or just one line by a number, whichever we can do to get the same number before either variable. So in this particular question, if I multiply the top line by 5 and the bottom line by minus 2, I should get plus 10y on the top line and minus 10y on the bottom line. So let's try that. So 3x plus 2y is equal to 1. Multiplying that by 5, I get 15x plus 10y is equal to 5. 
and multiplying 7x plus 5y is equal to minus 2 by minus 2, I get minus 14x minus 10y, and that's equal to 4. Because minus 2 and minus 2, that's two negatives multiplied by each other, which will give me an answer that's a plus. So now we have plus 10y minus 10y, so that will eliminate the y's, and we're left with 15x minus 14x, which is just x, and that's equal to 5 plus 4, which is 9. So therefore we get x to be equal to 9. So remember, in simultaneous equations, you're doing the sums down the way. So that's why I had 15x minus 14x, which was x, and 5 plus 4, which is 9. Both y's cancelled, as I said, but now that we know that x is equal to 9, it's going to be easy to work out the value for y. So we can pick either of the equations at the start, either the 3x plus 2y is equal to 1, or 7x plus 5y is equal to minus 2, and we're going to pop in 9 for x, and then solve for y. So I'm going to pick the first equation, so I'm going to have 3 by 9 plus 2y is equal to 1, so 3 by 9 is 27, plus 2y is equal to 1. So now I want to get at the end of this to have y is equal to some number. So the first thing to do is to have all like terms on the same side. So I have the terms of the y's on the left hand side, which is just going to be 2y. And the terms without a y are going to be 1 and 27. So I want to have those on the right hand side. So I'm going to have to move the 27 over to the right hand side. And it's going to go over as minus 27. So that gives me 2y is equal to 1 minus 27 and 1 minus 27 is equal to minus 26. So now we have 2y is equal to minus 26, but I don't want 2y equal to a number, I just want 1y equal to whatever the number is, and that number will be your answer. So to get rid of the 2 before the y, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So 2y divided by 2 will just give me 1y, and that's why I divided both sides by 2. And minus 26 divided by 2 is going to be minus 13, so therefore y is equal to minus 13. And remember, you're just dividing both sides by whatever the number is before the y, and that will give you just 1y equal to your answer. So there we have it, x is equal to 9, and y is equal to minus 13. So that's my answer for part c of the question, which was the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.